if you want to bind objects to a deforming mesh, what if you could just unwrap the model, place your objects on the UV map, and be already done with it, instead of using convoluted vertex binding, surface deform modifiers, or anything else. The node setup behind all this is really simple, and we are going to get right into it. As usual, let's start with some simple test geometry. Here I have the same geometry as the previous tutorial in the thumbnail, which is a simple plane with a few pinned edges, and a simple cloth simulation, which is quite slow with a turbulence and wind effector. And on top of this, I want to bind a button I quickly modeled. Now let's move on to the geometry node tab and create a new geometry node setup, which I'm going to rename object bind to UV. Now the first step will be to unwrap our model so we can see precisely what the position of the UVs are. And to see this more clearly, I will also want to test everything on a cube because the UVs are a bit more interesting than on this simple plane. So I'll also add my modifier to this cube so you can see how it works. So we can start by adding a set position node and for the position we can add this as a new group input which I'm going to rename UV map and set a default attribute called UV map which is the base blender UV map. And in the modifier tab I will want to select my UV map on both my test objects. Now here in the 3D space, on the Y and X axis, we should be able to see our unwrapped UV models. But the first thing we can see is that it is working correctly for the plane, but not for the cube. And here the reason is pretty simple. It's because the UV of the cube has some split edges, even though the model itself doesn't have split edges. So in our geometry node modifier, we can just add a split edges node before we, set the before we set the position, and it should be working better. Now we can also ask ourselves what would happen if we move our object, because the UVs are moving all over the place and not staying in our 0 to 1 position in the global world space. And it would be way easier if we can just keep our object in this position and not having to do any parenting or anything like this. So to correct this, we actually need to reset the position of this object when we are doing this computation. And for this, we will actually need the self object into an object info node, which will allow us to get the world position and the rotation scale and every transform of our object. Now we need to revert those so we can take the location and scale it by minus one using this into a vector rotate node as the vector input. And here you can set it to Euler and set the rotation as the rotation input. And make sure to hit inverse and just to make it a bit cleaner, we can also use a rotation to Euler node so we can convert this pink line into a purple line. Then to account for the scale, we can divide this vector by the scale and this should already invert pretty much all the transformation of our object. So let's set it as the offset input of our set position node. And right away, our object is not moving anymore when we are moving it. So its UV projection will stay in the 0 to 1 coordinates in the global world space. But we still have a small issue with the rotation. And to fix this, we can simply add another set position node. And here we will need to revert the position again with the vector rotate node. This time we also need to set the center, which will be the vector we computed just previously. And for the rotation, you can take the same rotation to Euler. And now we can plug this as the position of our second set position node. And with this, whatever the transformation will be to our base object, its UV projection will always stay in the same place in the global space. But here we still have an issue if we change the scale of our object. The scale of the projected version will also change. So to fix this, we can do that really quickly with another set position node. And here to revert the scale, we can just take the position, subtract the vector we used as the offset of the first set position, then divide this by the scale of our object info and add back the vector from before. And if you put this as the position of another set position node, it should properly correct the scale as well as the other transforms. 
So now let's clean this up a bit. And frame this with Ctrl J, label this unwrap model. And before moving on to binding the objects, let's just allow to toggle this on and off. So let's add a group input with a switch node. So you can switch between the original version of the mesh or the original version of the mesh joined with the unwrap version. So you can see everything more clearly. And let's put the switch input of the switch node as a new group input, which I'm going to rename unwrap model. And I'm going to set it to a single value and you can keep the default value to false. So now if we toggle this, we can see both versions of the mesh. And let's finally bind our object. And here to make it more convenient, I want to make it work for both a single object and a collection of objects. So I'm going also to make a new collection, which I am just going to call to bind. And I'm going to duplicate my object a few times and put all of those new versions in my new collection. Let's unwrap both my test models to make sure that all my instances are somewhere on the UV island. And here I just edited my button with a notch. So it's not symmetrical, just so we can test the rotation of the instances. So the first step is of course to get our object. So here we can take an object info node and a collection info node. And with the group input, we can put both the object and the collection info as new input of the modifier. And here I'm just going to select everything I want. Now here we only want to work with instances. So I'm going to check as instance on my object info node and also separate children on the collection info node. And let's take a look at those geometry. So join together the object info and the collection info. And here we can see, and here we can see an issue where the collection is not treated as the object. The object itself has its position resetted, but the, collection, but, the collection, but the collection more closely matches the global position of the objects. To fix this, we could set everything to relative, but it will cause a bunch of issues later if we rotate our objects. So it is better to set everything to original. So this is a bit convoluted, but bear with me. We first need to do a translate instances, with the translation being the location, then a scale instances with the scale being the scale and finally a rotate instances with the rotation from the info block and now if we replace this on the join geometry it should be way better now before binding our objects to the mesh we need to capture a few attributes set both capture attributes node to instances the first to quaternion and the second to vector and here we'll just need the instance rotation and their position. After this, to improve the computation of everything, let's also reset the rotation with the rotate instances node. And here we can take the capture attribute, do a invert rotation and plug this as the rotation. So the rotation of all the instances will be set back to zero. Now let's move the objects to their position relative to the UV space. For this, the magic node is a node called sample UV surface, which will allow us to sample the UV surface of our original mesh relative to some position and the UV map. So basically each button will sample the original mesh relative to its position to get the position on the mesh. And because the UV map is not moving when the mesh is deforming, this will update properly with any kind of deformation. So here for the mesh, we can take the base mesh from the group input the UV map will also be the UV map we set earlier. And here, let's first get the position attribute. And the sample UV will be the capture attribute vector from before. And now let's set this to our object with a set position node, like so. Now let's just have a better look at everything by joining those edited instances right before the group output. So we can better see that the position is updating correctly, which it is. And now let's tackle the rotation. First, let's match the Z axis of the button to the normal of the mesh. 
And to do this, you can also sample another attribute than just the position. So Control Shift D duplicate the sample UV surface node. And now the value we want to sample is just the normal. Now we can use this value with an align Euler to vector node and set this value as the vector and set it to the Z axis with the pivot set to auto. And now we should be able to set this as the input of a rotate instances node if we convert this to a rotation value, which is the pink socket. This is already looking pretty nice. We just need to set the other axis because everything is rotating all over the place. So right now we sampled the position of the center of the button and the normal vector, but we also need another vector which is consistent with the deformation of the mesh. And to do this, we'll just sample a position which is slightly offset to our original position. So for example, only on the x-axis and compute the difference of position between those two to get another vector. So I can control shift D duplicate the sample UV surface, which sampled the position. And for the, the sample UV, I'm going to take a vector math node, set it to add, and let's add a really small value on the x-axis of, for example, 0.1 millimeter. Now let's subtract to this value the original position we computed. And now we can use this with the second align Euler to vector node to align to the x-axis because we added only a value on the x-axis and this new subtracted vector as the vector input. Now for this to be more stable, we can set the pivot to the z-axis we corrected just before. So everything should be way more stable and seems to be working really nicely. And now we only have a few things to do. Right after this, we can set back the original rotation of our objects with a second rotate instances node. And for the rotation, we can fetch the rotation we captured at the beginning. So now if I rotate my original buttons, they are updating correctly on their instance version. And finally, you can see there will be an issue if the button we are trying to instance doesn't have a corresponding UV position, its position will just be set to zero right here, which we can correct by deleting all the instances that doesn't have any, any valid UV coordinates. So let's add a delete geometry node. Right before we set the position, set to instance, and for the selection, we can take our sample UV surface, use a boolean math not operation, and plug this into the delete geometry node. So now if the UV is not valid, it will be deleted. So now that this is working, I can uncheck the unwrap model. And let's also add a final control to add a normal offset if you want to. For this, we can take the sample normal we computed earlier, scale this value by some vector, which I'm going to set to zero for now, and plug this as the offset of the set position node right after the delete geometry node we just added. And for the scale, let's, uh, let's just add it as a new group input, which I'm going to rename normal offset. And I am going to set it to a single value subtype distance. And now we have a bit more control on everything. And let's do a final cleanup on everything. And I'm going to frame everything at the start of the instances and label this initialize instances all this will be by the instances and this is just output and now with this really simple setup we can do some really cool things and it is way more stable than vertex binding or other kind of bindings i really hope you learned something from this video don't forget to like and subscribe if you are into that. And as usual, the project files will be available on my Gumroad as part of the cloth sewing toolbox I am currently making and which will be released pretty soon. Thank you for watching and see you next time.